which you have for many uh, meetings. You are going through the development code, the draft development code. Uh, this is a workshop for that. You continue to work on your economic development corridor chapters. You are on what appears to be, in my notes, page 13 of that chapter. Uh, your procedure has been that you have a page in front of you. You ask commissioners if there's any particular items on that page that they would like to discuss. Um, the chair recognizes uh, any commissioner that is asked uh, to discuss an item. They point out what it is that they, they wish to have discussed. The group discusses it, gives guidance to staff, and uh, we move on to the next item. Uh, I will remind you that staff is still working on what will be on page 12 is the materials yard. That was a big issue at the last meeting. And uh, the issue of um, collection facilities and how it may relate to uh, charitable organizations. Uh, with that, again, you the last thing, the notes I have are the recycled facilities, 500 square foot or less, not adjacent to the freeway. That's the break point. And um, I think you can either start with your repair facilities or go down to um, uh, the agricultural uh, section and begin your discussions there. Sounds good. Does anyone have any comments on the recycling collection facilities? Or did we finish with that one? I think we finished. We were going I had repair service. Okay, repair service, computer, home electronic, and small appliances. Is everything everyone okay with that? Mm -hmm. And we can move on. I have I have electronic equipment industrial. The next one. Yeah. Um, do we do we want that in the community core? Is that like when it says industrial? That's what I guess I had a question. Would this is this like? Um, it's it not could be pretty heavy equipment. Okay, mm -hmm. but it's not like what we have there now in in the community core. Um, what's that electronic store? No, it would be far more intense okay. than that. So would we want industrial in the in the community core? I didn't I didn't think that th that would be um, a, since this is our downtown part here in Newport. That's what I was looking at. Our Newport is the Newport Road is that sorry EDC NR that's downtown right you know that's a good point I hadn't thought of it that way because I had electronics on the brain yeah when I saw uh, the word industrial industrial I, right that could be some heavy-duty equipment yeah. generators correct I would yeah, yeah. A, a portable like generator something that you would tow around would be a piece of electronic equipment right. that would be industrial so, in nature that that would be allowed the suggestion to you then if you have concerns is that you simply strike the word industrial so that it's not permitted in any of the zones. Well, industrial might be good, I don't know, in the north and south. Well, gateway. you might put that under the industrial section okay. then so that it. What do you think? Mark? Well, there's a, a note with it that services conducted entirely within an enclosed building, no outdoor storage, so Should we, strike we really industry? wouldn't. It really know wouldn't matter. Going, yeah, we wouldn't right, see. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. I'd, I'd like to keep it the way it, it is here in order to. You wouldn't want to strike industrial. Yeah, I like the caveat. Out. No, because it because it's all on the inside. It's all on the inside. The caveat's what changes it. Okay. I just didn't think. If it you're would, okay with that. I just didn't think it would. It's. I just didn't think any industrial is good in the downtown area. But it, it's it. The way I'm reading, it's not really industrial. It'd be, say, industrial qu equipment. Say someone maybe has a, a lathe or a, a bench press or something that needs to get repaired. They could take it to a repair facility that's enclosed. It's not really an industrial. They're not manufacturing something. They're just, you know, repairing it. That's the way I read it. Is that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Although right. it could be fairly large equipment. Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> mm -hmm. Then we can move on to agricultural, plant nurseries, cultivation of plants indoor or outdoor. And you had a question and a concern of that uh, previously, and my highlighted note is that uh, 
plant nurseries cultivation and it's the cultivation that is the key to this where it's the growing of the plants indoor or outdoor for this compared to the nurseries that are retail sales on page 12 fourth item down the distinction between the two types of ones more sales oriented the other one is more cultivation oriented and there's a uh, obviously the um, uh, difference is why there's a difference between being prohibited in four of the five zones. Okay. Everyone okay with that? So. Yeah, I don't have a problem with it. Okay, so we have like Louis New Nursery in the South Gate. It is a nursery and it does retail, but it also has some cultivation on their property there. But that's not the major activity of that. Okay, okay, not the, okay. Just to clarify mm -hmm. that. Yeah, if you're growing, even if, even if all your plants are in the boxes and the cans and things of that sort, that's technically cultivation, but it's still more oriented towards retail, retail. as opposed to mm -hmm. something that you plant in the ground and then you harvest it, uh, which could mean you know, a machine that digs up the, the whole root ball and so forth. But the distinction is the intensity of it. Okay. All right. I just wanted to make sure we weren't kicking them out. They've been there for years. So. Mm -hmm. Well, no, this is for new. Okay. What's already there is there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then we can move on to institutional uses, animal hospitals, small animals, large animals. Hello. Hey. Oh. Would this be like PetSmart for small animals? Like a PetSmart? Is those, are those considered? No, this would be a facility like that a whose primary activity is. is. Okay. okay. Did you guys get my mm -hmm. text? Mm -hmm. Yes, that you were buying us all dinner. <laughs> <laughs> That's the text I got. One interpretation. <laughs> that you hit the lotto and decide to quit. Yeah. We're on page 14 of the EDC mm -hmm. chapter. So I didn't, I didn't get your answer. I think she asked like a PetSmart right. um, or a Petco. A PetSmart and Petco are retail facilities that have incidental pet grooming and pet care and things of that sort. Um, they often refer to uh, local animal hospitals where animals need more care than what can be provided on site. These are animal hospitals where that is the primary function of that facility to house and care for animals on a, on a short or medium term uh, time frame. And the distinction between small animals, you know, dogs, cats, mice, rats, as opposed to large animals, uh, horses and cows and camels and emus and so forth. Ostrich, if you've got them. Is everyone okay with the way it sits? Yeah, I don't have a problem. I'm fine. Okay. Assisted living community care facilities. You following along okay? Yeah, right. Can you explain a standalone assisted living facility shall not be considered a standalone residential facility? So is that distinguishing between a house that someone turns into a senior care facility? Is that what that means? That's different? Correct. The, the standalone assisted living um, is a facility that is designed for the assistance as opposed to a residential development which could be independent living where you could have a building with a hundred rooms in it that is basically a hotel and people are there even for long periods of time that is a standalone residential facility but a an assisted living facility is where that hundred rooms also has prepared meals in some portion it has like a, a suite that has uh, uh, hairdressers and things of that sort, a room where you can get a medical exam once a week because you've arranged for a doctor to show up, that kind of okay. thing. Okay, thank you for explaining that. Everyone's okay with that one? Mm -hmm. Churches, synagogues, temples, and other religious facilities. Any comments? Okay, community center. I see it's permitted in all areas. 
I was wondering about that. I've got a question. I think Commissioner Thomas commented and wanted some verbiage in the EDC area saying that the EDC, the reason we have it, is to be a <coughs> revenue generator. A revenue generator. Mm -hmm. And I don't <coughs> see a community center as being that. So do we really want to have that in the EDC area? Yeah. <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I'm kind of for that because with a suitable size a community center, we can always multi-purpose it in case like we have an emergency where we have to evacuate certain areas or people. Um, given the closed nature of some of these communities with these walls and everything going up around them, uh, my thinking is that if we had a place where we can marshal people that's centrally located, uh, it would be to an advantage from an emergency response, emergency care, and a way that we could take care of a lot of people without having to drive all over the area, which may be disrupted by some kind of catastrophe. In That's why I'm for that. In addition to that, you have to look at these uses uh, on, as the bigger picture as well. You, in order for your economic development corridor to be a viable community and a viable economic engine for the community, it's got to have a variety of things in it, like churches, like multifamily, like commercial activities and so forth. And a community center would be one center where individuals could um, uh, go and share in that community and there are often side benefits to that by other commercial developments that occur that spring up around it that take advantage of you know if you have a, an active community center you have a lot of people going to it if you have a lot of people going to a particular location then the properties around it are visited far more often so it is something that contributes to the economic uh, uh, growth of a uh, of the area all right thank you for explaining that well, I can see how it's it's not permitted in Northgate, which you wouldn't want one there, but it's permitted in McCall, which is around the hospital, so that's a good use. And then it's conditional on the others, which means we can control it. It yeah, says it's fine. permitted in all of them. It says yeah. permitted in all of them. You're looking at the I'm one below it. it. We're at the one above it, church, uh, community, community center. center. Oh, oh, right there. Okay, I'm looking yeah. at convalescent center. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. Now that it's explained, that's fine with me the way it says. Mm -hmm. So we want to move on. Mm -hmm. Congregate care facility. What is? Can I ask what that is? A congregate care. Um, basically, it's a. Um, it's like group homes, uh, and where you congregate individuals together to provide for a certain level of care for those individuals. Is that like a hospice? Um, no, a hospice is uh, a hospice care is at a more intensive uh, medical level than would be a congregate care. Your group home would be like the, not foster, yeah, like a foster group home, right? Correct, yes, that would be one example. And now the other thing that, that would be of concern is these recent released offender homes, you know, the transitional homes. Mm -hmm. um, I think we need to pull that out and segregate that and limit where that is, obviously. You're going to be hard pressed to do that. There are state laws that allow for the, um, those kind of facilities. Mm -hmm. They mandate that such facilities that serve six or fewer individuals not be treated in any other manner than a single family residence. That is code. state law, and city after city after city after city has raised that uh, issue, fought that battle, lost that battle, and spent a lot of time, energy, and money uh, getting nowhere. Can we, can we at least put all of them as a conditional use permit? Oh, that's completely up to the commission. Could, yeah. we, could we do that? I would say not allowed in Northgate because that's a different area anyway. It's already marked as such, even not permitted and then conditional use on all of them, on the rest. So you're changing the one P to a conditional use. Yeah. Okay. 
That takes us to convalescent hospital care facility. And it's basically a larger scale, more commercial scale than the congregate care. Or an assisted living. Mm -hmm. Now you have it not in the north gate is the one. Again, is, is more, in, the is concept is more in, in uh, uh, research and development industrial kind of area. There is one, but I don't know if that's considered the McCall corridor. There is one off the freeway in between McCall and uh, Ethanac. Well, if one currently exists, okay. if they were, this were to be enacted um, under these limitations, that facility would become an existing non-conforming and they would be allowed to continue and remain, uh, even expand uh, under certain provisions of, of the code. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming that's why it's permitted in the call area and then it's conditional use permit everywhere else right. due to the proximity of the hospital? Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any more comments on that one? No. We move, moves us to government facility. It says permitted in each area. Yeah, we won't be able to do whatever we want. <laughs> we're we're going to do it anyway, so why make it anything other than simply permitted? When you say governmental facility, does that consist of courthouse? Does it consist of city hall? Does it, it would, consist in of this example, it would be any city government activity because if it's any county, state, or federal, they do what they want regardless of our limitations anyway. So what so we're trying city. to do is make sure that if we need to put a corporate yard someplace in the city, the city can simply go, the city council can simply go through that step. General plan consistency, so the commission sees it, but then the, the city council decides uh, on the nature and level of the facility. Okay. I was going to bring up again how Commissioner Thomas mentioned about being at a revenue generator in EDDC, but as Mr. Clare pointed out, when you have facilities, say City Hall, people go to lunch, they go nearby. Mm -hmm. So it, I'm there's fine a with it. synergy to it that, that adds to the community. Okay. It takes us to hospitals. I'm fine. Okay, everyone's fine with that one? Research and Development Laboratory. Services conducted completely within an enclosed building. Permitted everywhere? Yep. Okay, hearing no comments. School, private, public, vocational, trade school, university, college. And I see they are broken down into different. Private is not allowed in Northgate. So that would be like, um, like Zusa Pacific, for instance. Uh, down in Marietta in their ECD used to be a grocery store mm -hmm. and they it closed and so they came into that area so if we had industrial and there was an open spot they possibly could go into those areas is that except for they wouldn't be allowed in the in the, the north gate right okay and I see the comment public schools are regulated by the state mm -hmm. so there's nothing we have no say whatsoever so my question to staff then would be can they go say in a residential area and just pick out and plop it right there yes uh, so they have the power to do what they want absolutely okay and you want schools next to residential <laughs> residential right. that's, good. that's a good thing matter of fact if they were to take those uh, residential properties Oftentimes you have better infrastructure <laughs> and mm -hmm. as opposed to uh, locating a school in a new area where there is no infrastructure because the state is notorious for not building into school development budgets roadway improvements. Right. Mm -hmm. They usually say local district, go to the city, uh, take your hat off, beg for a little roadway improvements. Okay. Now, as far as the private and the EDC, I think in the North Cape, I think it should be allowed. Uh, like you say, if the Zusa Pacific wants to open up up there or something, I, I don't think that would be a bad use up there. Um, what's the downside to that, Charles? Uh, just the level of, of see, a, a trade school or a vocational school would be um, fine. 
a, a university or a college would be fine. But uh, in an industrial area, it may be inappropriate to have an elementary school or a middle school or a, a high school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Okay, that takes us to residential uses, caretakers, residents. Yes, I have quite a bit of experience in trying to convince people that caretaker units don't mean that you can put a bed in the back of your commercial shop and call it a caretaker unit. It is something where obviously it's a use that is needed. In another part of your code, we much better define what a caretaker unit is, its limitations and so forth, that being that you can't, I'll give you an example. Uh, down the street from City Hall in 29 Palms, there's a commercial building. That commercial building was built um, on a piece of property that also had a residence on it. They were allowed permits to build that commercial building because the residence was, was uh, declared to be a caretaker, caretaker. unit. Um, subsequent to that, the caretaker moved out, got fired, and then they just rented it to anybody that, that needed a place to rent. And so you had a disconnect between that caretaker unit and what was happening on the majority of the property. So I built into the language uh, of the draft code that defines it. It's still a very liberal opportunity to have a caretaker unit because there is completely justifiable reasons to have a caretaker uh, on a property. But there is also a possibility to abuse that option and so we've defined it well. Um, I think it's defined well. Um, in here, I think because of the nature of the, the categories that um, they should be prohibited in certain of the zones, like the community core, because you're not gonna, you shouldn't be having a facility developed that's gonna need that kind of on-site um, uh, protection. Explains it well. So you have them as permitted. And we don't need a condition. You don't think a conditional use permit? Okay. No, if they follow the 16 requirements, they're okay. they're fine. Okay. That moves us to emergency and homeless shelters, as mandated by state law. Yep. Why can't we put a conditional use permit? Saying you're not allowed to put a conditional use permit on them. You have to have them permitted by right. But we still and have I, code that they have to live by, right? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. There are still codes that they would have to live by. And um, you want them in areas like the core because that's where there's the need. And that's why the state has mandated that they be allowed because in, for example, industrial areas, those are the more wide open areas and you get a number of people that will do just that. They'll find places in the wide open spaces. And in the downtown cores, you'll have uh, individuals that will uh, congregate. I've had experience in both those directions. In Fontana where people worked at Ikea and lived under the trees on the field across the street from Ikea. <laughs> Um, and where we had uh, my responsibilities when I was with uh, Pomona was the homeless facilities and the homeless care. And you had a lot of people that didn't want, um, th they wanted the, the food and the medical assistance, but they didn't want shelter. And so you had to, to walk this fine line, but if it's a facility that is controlled by the state as opposed to the local entities, they feel more comfortable and will take more advantage of it. And the more you can get off the street, the, the fewer are on the street. I still like the idea of conditional use in the downtown area. Can't do it. Mm. Yeah, My because question. I'm looking at we're going to have bodies floating all over the place because invariably homeless people are not gainfully occupied with a job or something like that. Mm -hmm. And so here we are with a public safety concern. The state has considered all of this and has mandated what they've mandated. I sure hope they give us funding to take care of the bloodshed that's going to come if something happens. On that, on that note, funding is really important to our city mm -hmm. and 
January 28th, there's a homeless count. They need 20 volunteers. If you'd like to go out and help count the homeless, let them know here at City Hall. It's from 5 until 9 in the morning. Mm. I wanted to ask with the emergency and homeless shelters as mandated by state law, but the state, do they actually own or run any or nope. the, the county or the cities? Nope. So then I would assume, wouldn't this run hand in hand with churches? Because don't they, some churches run? Some, some churches do, yes, but okay. it can be a private in entity that has gotten some kind of grants or some kind of other assistance um, or through um, just uh, people donating money and so forth. Okay. It's a hot topic. And I guess we can move on to the next topic. Uh, live work units subject to residential percentage limits. Can you explain? Um, my experience with live work units is that you need to have, and I hope I've got it um, defined in this chapter. If not, it's in uh, it's either in the definition section or it's in one of the other sections. But you need to be careful with live work units so it's actually that, that the majority of the activity, at least in these zones, is some kind of commercial, some kind of uh, economic generator for the community and that you're giving individuals the opportunity to um, live in close proximity to where they work. The most ex experience I have with it, if you would go to the downtown of Pomona, there are a tremendous number mm -hmm. of um, live work facilities in that area because you have a number of artists that live and make their crafts um, in either in the facility or adjacent to the facility have their um, their uh, studios, studios yeah. uh, there and they have their home in another portion of the building. <coughs> I have set up a whole series of standards from the experience I had in that community trying to regulate that. I have set up a whole series of standards that deal with um, that their that the artist or the person that is doing the work portion of this live work unit lives in the unit that you can't have a separation between who's living and who's working there that there are size limitations that there are separation limitations so on and so forth in order for it to be a true facility that has um, uh, the live work components to it and that it, it can be very beneficial to the community so again that's that's why it's suggested but under a conditional use permit so that the um, the commission and council gets the, or just commission, gets the opportunity to see what's proposed in the mixture that's proposed. How does that contrast with a home office? A home office, um, uh, and a home office is incidental to the primary residential nature of uh, the activity. A live work unit, the primary activity is more 60-40 work oh. versus live. Okay, okay. And that takes it to multifamily dwellings. Oh, okay. I don't okay. have a problem with that. Okay, second dwelling units. Is that the grandma shack in the back? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they're regulated by state. So any, yeah. any uh, property that you have uh, that you've allowed to have as a single family residential designation, you're um, mandated to allow under certain criteria, obviously there are several criteria and they are in, the, in our code um, that allow for the second units and they have to be considered uh, as allowed. Single family residences. Okay. Okay, then we can move on to storage. Contractor storage yard, no retail sales. Comment? Yeah. Um, hold on. So I'd like them to be. Let's see what page are we on here. We it's my 14. Okay. Um, I would like them not in Southgate. We already have a problem there. Um, that's 
not where it, well. We already got stuff uh, out there now. So, con I, I didn't want to interrupt. Contractor storage yard, no retail sales. So, like, um, the summit rentals, that's different than just, you're, you're talking like a construction? Correct. Where they just store their equipment? Correct. Okay. I, I would say not on Southgate, um, immediately adjacent to the freeway, but conditional otherwise. Are you, are you okay. guys okay with that? Immediately? Not, not adjacent to freeway. Unlo unless we just... Unless they're properly screened. No, no screening, nada. It's yeah. virtually impossible to yeah. screen such. Yeah. If you've got uh, cranes and um, lifts and a variety of other things, you, you see it, you drive up the freeway here, and you have the, the uh, lifts that they like to yeah. stick like up to and put it. And stick uh -huh. a flag on top. Mm -hmm. Can we okay. see a map of that, um, the, the EDC in the south gate there? Do we have it? I just have my small one. We didn't bring the... Because I had a, f a friend came and asked, and he was, he, I think he actually has one in, in there now. It's not legal. And he goes, I want to buy some property that I can do it on. And I was trying to tell him what street to the west he would have to buy of to not be in the EDC. So is that right there... Is that Ziders or what street is that? I couldn't tell you what street that is. Off yeah, the top of my head, yeah, that's no. Ziders. I think it is Ziders. Yeah, it? because there's a big farm yeah. right in here. And down further, there is that uh, shopping center where they have that restaurant that's got the lousy salsa. <laughs> 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 yeah, I think that's what that is. Yeah. So how far over does the light industrial go? Does it go on over here as far as zoning or land use? Does it go over to here, or is that all um, rural residential? I think it's all rural residential over there. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so we're, let's see, where were we there? Contractor storage yard, bottom yeah, of 14. So, I, again, if we could add, I would propose that we add the word not immediately adjacent to the freeway and then otherwise conditional use permit. Mm -hmm. And then you have nothing allowed in the McCall City Center or Newport, right? Right. And then Northgate, you permit it conditional use. Okay. Same thing on your lumber yard. Um, I guess, I, I don't know. What's the, uh, what's the, uh, I tend on EDC to tend to try and keep retail immediately adjacent to the freeway. Isn't that a good concept yes. to go by? Yes. So a lumber yard, even though it is quote retail, most purchasers are corporate. They're not walk-in. Yes, it's bigger. And they sales. store things outside more often than, you know, or if it's not outside, it's, it, it's typically under a large cover. Yeah not walled on all the sides and so forth. So I, I would, I would uh, uh, recommend that we put the not adjacent to the freeway for the lumber yard as well. Yeah, we'll Again, because that's just prime re retail real estate along the freeway. Mm -hmm. The only problem I see there is that Lowe's storage yard is it's, it's within 600 feet of the freeway. And uh, they got everything known to man in that in that that storage facility back there. But that's kind of a it's incidental to it, right? Or it's not a quote lumber yard. Correct. No, it's, in, it's yeah, it's in, incidental. incidental. But okay. it's a storage yard. Yeah, that's and, right. You're right. So. You're right. So oh, I see what you're saying. Material storage yard, wholesale mm -hmm. sales. So you'd like to see right, the but lumber yard. Lowe's isn't a wholesale sales. It's no, retail. Oh, retail. Oh, it's retail. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's retail. Okay. You're Parcel right, delivery yeah. service, FedEx, UPS. Mm -hmm. Warehouse and storage buildings. Is that your tilt ups, the mm -hmm. those kind of things? Right. Which have taken. Oh, and, and these could be the mini storage facilities as well. Ugh, ugh, no, no. We already have one taking up prime real estate along the freeway. I say these should be banned in the. 
Didn't we discuss that in another yeah, section? Yeah, we talked this, talked mm. this. What, what section covered this? Talked about it last week, didn't we? No, it was a couple of weeks ago. Well, we would just make a notation to see the previous discussion. Mm -hmm. but and then it, whatever you guys decided upon will be. I would recommend that they're not allowed in anywhere in the EDC because they are not revenue generating. They're taking up prime real estate. They can be other parts of the city, but I don't see any need for them to take up prime real estate in any parts of the EDC. Does any, do you guys agree or disagree? I'm not really comfortable with that. Um, Mainly because hmm, I have to give that some more head work. On which one? Warehouses and storage buildings. Okay. Now, if you're talking about the stuff similar to what they have in uh, South Moreno Valley, um, those are practically distribution centers mm -hmm. up there. And that's what you're referring to? No, I, that well, I don't want layout? that. I don't want that for the same reason in that they, they generate very little revenue. They take up a lot of space. There's a lot of truck traffic and, and mm -hmm. uh, 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 things you have to mitigate with those. Um, and then I'm also talking about the storage units where you can rent the locker, you know, a, a 10 foot square feet or 15 or whatever and mm -hmm. store your furniture. I'm, I'm against those as well in the EDC. Not, in this, not against them in the city, but just not having them take up prime real estate in the EDC. I guess you would have to convince me of what their benefit is. Is there any benefit to them, Charles? Americans have a tendency to keep things. Yeah, and 40. they keep things um, beyond their uh, home's ability to store them. And so it's not unusual at all to have um, uh, to have properties that are so small that you can't have your own shed or something on it, so you need someplace else to store them. If we could convince my wife and other Americans <laughs> to give up some of her possessions, Don't you would Don't bring your personal issues into this, Charles. <laughs> Everything about this is personal. Um, uh, I'm one of those. You could, um, you could do away with it, would, but would it you, is would, a... Would you say there's other, uh, sufficient other locations in the city where they could be located? Certainly there are. Okay. Certainly there are. So there's a value to having them. Mm-hmm. But do we want them in the EDC? If they'd be considered more on the industrial side than maybe just in the Northgate, since that's where we seem to have yeah. everything over that way. Would you be okay with that, Earl, if we let them in the Northgate and not anywhere else? I would like to see Southgate, because we're putting an industrial park down there anyway. But do you and want space? But do you do you want the rest of them? I don't mind being conditional use. Do you want them to take up that when you could have another office building with people being employed and high tech or doctors or something like that? Still be a conditional use. I would make that decision when the project presents its stuff. But but it would be hard for you to deny that conditional use permit. Um, unless you could demonstrate how there would be adverse, unmitigatable <coughs> adverse impacts from it. Yeah. So this is a philosophical question. You assume that um, if it's a permitted or conditionally permitted use, then there are, is the realistic potential that such development will occur. Do you want such development to occur adjacent to the freeway or upon properties that have um, significant other higher potential uses uh, to that. That's, that's my whole point. It's not that it's bad, it's that, that there's better that we could use it for. Um, would mm. you? I, I, I'd, I'd like to get it out of the community core. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. so no community core, no Newport Road, right? Yeah, I don't, no, I don't think nothing in yeah. Newport. Okay. Allow it conditional in the North Gate. What about McCall? Do you want that? There is one over there now already on the McCall area. We're at a McCall. Right. Um, 
you, you turn right on McCall off the freeway, head towards the hospital, and immediately on the left, you'll see U-Haul rental trucks, and then there's oh, a storage. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Motor homes yeah. and everything. That's right. They've Next been to there the for channel. a zillion years. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. yeah, we're hoping. And they had approval for an expansion that they've never uh -huh. uh, taken advantage of. Okay. Yeah. Mm. For storage of RVs and boats and things mm. like that. Yeah. Jason, right adjacent RVs to the channel. Over there now. How about we conditionally allow it there and not allow it in Southgate? I, I had I just have this feeling that something's going to pop up in Southgate on the west side. But do you want it to pop up? Yeah, because we need the money. There's no money in them, though. There's no there's no sales tax revenue off of it. It's a service. A service. So there's it's no service. this non rats my concern is there's no revenue generating in it. Mm -hmm. That's. I was just looking at the services conducted entirely within the building. That would be the tilt up side of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I I still just like the idea of conditional use there in the South Gate. I don't have a problem with all the rest of it, but just there. I'm thinking we need to do some add some kind of symmetry to how we're stacking all these buildings all over the city. Okay, so we're 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 a no on n Newport and City Center and we're a conditional on the other three. The other three. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which takes us to transportation, communication, and utilities, communication facilities, cell towers. You basically have no control over it, mm. right? Pretty much, but we, we do the conditional use permit and we <coughs> establish a whole series of standards uh, relative minimizing as much as possible, uh, dealing with co-location, encouraging co-location, encouraging and requiring um, the uh, stealthing of the towers, uh, giving staff more opportunity to define what st a stealth tower is. Uh, a bottle brush that they think looks like a tree doesn't it's not cut it as is, is, is I'm that. thinking about that. Looks Bell like a Martin. phallic symbol. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say. So I don't see how in the world you can reconfigure those. That moves us on to transportation facilities. Got a list of things here. Any comments on any of those? And the airport one is kind of sort of, uh, no you're airport. never going to collect enough land together in a flight path, a reasonable flight path to get a, to get a an airport in any of those zones, uh, with the exception possibly of the the um, North Gate. No, oh, they got that one over there off of. Uh, uh, can you think of the name of it? And it's Paris's airport. Mm -hmm. That little yeah. thing over there where they do the the parachuting. parachuting. Yes. So, so it's not likely that you would even get another one over there, but yeah. they may expand <laughs> in some way, shape, or form <coughs> and come into the city. I keep thinking they're going to close that because they want to develop that area. Can they? Can people land private air? Excuse me, private airplanes on that besides the ones who have the jumpers? Can you just land the plane there, or is that certainly closed? yes, no, it's, it's a it's an airport it's open to the public. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, as long as you, I don't know if they have a tower or not, but if they don't have a tower, then it's uh, clear sight rules or whatever the, the phrase is that they use, and it's open. Uh, like most small um, city airports, um, got a lot of experience in Apple Valley with the one. They don't have a tower. They ha don't have control of it. You, um, you go by the flight rules that, that are mandated. You make sure that you don't get hit by one of the other bigger planes that come through the area. Um, you can arrange either beforehand or, or afterwards uh, refueling of your plane, uh, things of that sort. Uh, same thing in 29 Palms for the private airport. The right. It's a county airport. It's run by the county, mm -hmm. um, uh, but uh, it's the same set of rules whether Does it's Frank private Valley or county. Have a tower? I don't. I'm not familiar. I never <laughs> saw one over there. Many times have I been back. It, there, but and a, and a tower is a relative term too. Yeah. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be something that's in the air can be a room where they have windows that yeah. that they can see <laughs> the runway and yeah. and see both ends of the runway and so forth. Yeah, it's called VFR. Y yes. VFR. So that moves us on to utility and service uses <coughs> and structures. Nothing we can do with Any that. Any problem there? Permitted everywhere. 
And I'd like you to note, because I feel this is important, that in these areas that we're talking about, commercial solar fields or wind farms are expressly prohibited. Talking about use of land with little return for the community. That takes us to light manufacturing of food, lumber, wood, and paper products, one through seven. I don't have any problem with those, except I think we should, we talked about this earlier, adding a another rendering category. Um, well, there's a rendering plant. Rendering plant. Uh, but also mulch prohibiting it, uh, like the, in the EDC anyway. Um, the one right over by Louis Nursery, that all that mulch dropping, you know, the, there's nothing wrong with it, but again, very little revenue, and it's it's not uh, professional. It's not, uh, I think we have a better use for the property than that gentleman who came here and proposed on it. And, you know, I don't want someone driving into Menifee and seeing a bunch of piles going, oh, that's Menifee. You know, then again, the guy that owns the property reserves the right to do what he wants to with it. According to our zoning laws. Mm -hmm. We Did don't want to don't wanna start stepping on these people who own this land and already have existing businesses there. Well, no, we can't do anything with the existing, the existing. This is just mm -hmm. If the they're legally established. Mm -hmm. That's the key that people seem to ignore. Simply because you started up a business doesn't mean it was ever legal at that location. And we are going through the process of creating a code that deals uh, in a manner with such businesses. But simply because an activity began and may be running for a period of time, simply because the county had said, oh, yeah, we, we recognize that you're over there, never legitimized that business. Mm -hmm. What you're dealing with here, is the cre however, was, is the creation of new such businesses, irrespective of what existing facilities may be, whether they were legal or not legal. Do you want new startup activities of this nature? And since we're in the industrial use section, I want to bring to your attention again the request, because this is the place where you would discuss the issue, the um, grease service, the NG grease service that you've had, they've participated in, in the discussions a couple of times. Mm -hmm. And this would be the, the location of where you decide whether or not to um, have uh, this kind of service and or the rendering service. You were provided with information uh, about uh, rendering and so forth uh, that Commissioner Sobeck had provided. Um, since you probably were not aware that it was going to be discussed tonight, you may not have reviewed that material, so you may want to Put that in the back of your head and then review that material and uh, be ready to discuss it at, um, at uh, the December 10th meeting. Yeah, I would like to defer that. But as we have said mm -hmm. several times, we want to make sure that when individuals participate in the process, that we're, when their topic fits into the discussion, that it's clearly been uh, brought to mind and discussed. And the, the gentleman that spoke with that submitted the letter about the rendering, which mm -hmm. he was in which part of the EDC? I think he's in uh, the Northgate. Oh, okay. I think he's in Northgate. Unle unless you want it, everyone wants to discuss and hold off till December 10th about the rendering, I have no problem adding rendering to the, the two that with conditional use permits because the other three are all prohibited. I'm okay to add it, too. I don't have a problem with it, except that I've worked in one of those before. And I'll tell you, if you want to deal with flies, if you want to deal with odors, I would definitely want to see his, his processes and exactly what he's going to be rendering as far as meat products, <coughs> meat products, or whatever. Well, he said that he already has the material on his lot. It's just a matter of whether he further renders it. Yeah. That's it's already and there. I, and I would imagine that the state and the AQMD and environmental health Yeah, they're gonna all be make, involved. Gonna in make that. them yeah. jump through hoops in order to do it so Exactly. Yeah, but we I would just we would never know what's going on there probably. Uh 
No, you definitely will you, know what's you, going on. You will on. know. <laughs> I no, mean, despite we, all of yeah. the regulations oh, really? that are applied, you will still know. Yeah. I mean, take a look at that uh, multi-million dollar uh, raw water reclamation facility that's just north of us. If you ever hit Home Depot on the wrong day, you're going to know all about filter flies uh -huh. because they, they just come straight down on the wind and they infest the whole place. So, so. Uh, did I hear that, at least for the moment, rendering as a permitted use with a conditional use permit in the Northgate area? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to make sure my note was clear. And since we're there, did we want to, as Commissioner Thomas suggested, prohibit the mulch? I'm did we have a consensus on that? Because I'm okay with... I don't have a problem with mulch. I mean... The, the, There's the, one the problem I had, well, the, mm -hmm. how can I say this tactfully? Mm -hmm. When he started talking about whatever, and it wasn't like wood chips and stuff, because he started talking about toxic material yeah. being mixed in, and that's... Oh, yeah, they put insecticides and so stuff in it on weed killer. We already <laughs> have off of Murrieta Road, the, the one across from Audie Murphy right. Ranch. We have the other one here. That's on Newport. In the ADC, I, we already have, so yeah. I'm, I think I'm with Commissioner Thomas to say enough's enough. Enough's enough. Prohibited in all zones, EDC yep. zones? Yes. Okay. Okay, I can go with that. That takes us down to use textile and leather products. So is this the manufacturer or just the... Yes, yeah. this is industrial, so it's the manufacturer and processing of these items. From everything under industrial is considered the manufacturing and processing of, of these items. So we can pretty much take the rest of this page, metal machinery, electrical products, all of them, both sections together, because it looks like you have... It's various versions of the exact same stuff. Yeah, because it's mm -hmm. prohibited in the three middle and it's okay on the ends of the towns. I have no problem with that. Yeah, neither do I. Okay. It moves us on. Okay, it all, I don't know how your guys' page goes, but it looks like it goes all the way down through, cause mine starts at radar infrared and then it goes all the way down. So then are we now on engineering and uh, scientific instruments? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And the only difference is there is we do include it as a conditional use permit in the um, McCall. Uh, McCall Boulevard. Anyone want to comment on those? Um, and why? Because those the are all those nearby. are all in house. Yeah. Yeah, they're all mm -hmm. in house. I mean, could we put a caveat over here saying that services are conducted inside? Can I see a little cheat map there? A little cheat sheet. Why would we not want these on Newport Road? Uh, just the intensity of activity. Just. Um, so what do you envision for Newport Road then? Retail stuff? Mm-hmm. See, because this is all the manufacturing of, or light manufacturing, so it's That's more true. on the industrial side. And I heard a suggestion for wholly within a building? Yeah. For these? Yeah. That takes us to solar generating facilities. <sighs> and I would assume this is not residential? Correct. This is your um, solar fields and so forth. Again, it's basically it's a repeat for clarification purposes of uh, the solar issue, solar farms that were discussed previously. Mm. So technically we could actually delete it. Cause yeah, it's, let's delete it because we got, that would be a redundancy yeah. that's not needed. And if there's a redundancy, there's a possibility, well, did they mean something a little bit different here than there? Yeah. And then you raise a doubt and mm -hmm. cause problems for staff. And same issue with, uh, well, no, the recycling is meant to be a, not just where you bring your tin cans and bottles and, and 
uh, get a few cents for them. This is a recycling facility where you've got large machinery and so forth. They grind up the bottles and heat them up to make new glass oh, and, we don't want that and um, things of that sort, where it's a manufacturing process or it's a, heavy, it's a heavier industrial process, which is why I treated it the same as the other industrial manufacturing kind of uh, activities. Because it fundamentally is taking a different raw material and manufacturing an end product, a plastic out of it, new glass out of it, uh, uh, new aluminum out of it, and so forth. And this goes back to what Chris was saying earlier about uh, this is truck intensive. We're going to have a logistics yes, it problem could be, there. Could be truck intensive. Yeah. With people coming, I mean, I'm against that in all these areas. On the recycling process facilities, yeah. um, I don't see where we have anything where it has to be done inside. I have seen a couple of these facilities while they're working, and you have a lot of them that are done outside and you have glass blowing, plastic, cardboard, aluminum stuff. cans. I mean, do you want to add to that? Must be done entirely inside. Mm -hmm. I personally don't want them here at all because you're going to get into a waste problem. You're going to get into a traffic problem. There's going to be noise. There's going to be odors. Um, how do you feel? It's not appropriate for Northgate, but maybe not anywhere else. Not in Northgate? I'm saying in Northgate. Oh, in Northgate? But not anywhere else. So, uh, well right. That's four. Yeah, I think I tend to agree. I don't even want them up there. <laughs> now that I'm looking at Northgate. Because we got big plans for that area as far as revenue generation. And I do not see having a glorified junkyard up there as being mm -hmm. a viable revenue generator. Mm -hmm. So is that an option then? You just want to star every one of them? Yeah, that, that would be what my your, recommendation. What are your course, thoughts, you know. Charles? Um, I believe with, from my recommendation that the facility with a conditional use permit could be limited in impacts and should be allowed in the, obviously in the Northgate area but possibly the south gate i'm not as convinced that the south gate because of its proximity to to residential and rural that that may that may be impactful but under a conditional use permit so it's up to the commission uh, uh, north gate my recommendation is yes keep it under conditional use permit i'm uh, tepid as to uh, how south we, gate how about we do not permit it everywhere except north gate with a conditional only for Northgate. Yeah, that's... Would you be okay with that, Earl, if there was a conditional on it? <coughs> yeah. But I'll do a line item veto on it. <laughs> <laughs> just me on that. I'm just grudgingly giving it away. Okay. Okay, it is 7 o'clock, so I think we should um, call this workshop mm -hmm. to an end, and we can take five minutes before we start the regular meeting. Okay. Sure. And I'd like to call the regular meeting to order. Deputy City Clerk Allen, could you call uh, the roll, please? Yes, sir. Commissioner Phillips. Present. Commissioner Thomas. Here. Vice Chair Metalco. Here. And I'll note Commissioner Sobeck and Chair Lee Meyer are absent. Where is Lee Meyer anyway? I'd like to have everyone Shuffle stand for the flag, flag, <laughs> flag salute, please. Here for the final hurrah. Yeah. Hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Excuse me. Are there any agenda approvals or modifications? No, sir. Any presentations? No, sir. How about public comments? I have none this evening. Okay, item seven. I'd like uh, and, uh, someone to move for the approval of the meeting minutes, unless there's a change to be made. So move. Second. All in favor? You can see me. Aye. All, all in favor? Yes. Aye. 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 Those opposed? None. Okay, 
takes us to consent calendar. We have nothing there. Public hearings, we have none. Item 10, discussion items. Yes, Mr. Chairman, at your last meeting, an individual got up and commented about their frustration in not being able to uh, obtain permits to build um, two accessory structures upon which they were going to put solar panels. The commission asked that um, you agendize the discussion of whether or not you wanted to have a discussion of accessory structures. You do have and you will have in your new code a chapter that deals with accessory structures. So at a point in the relatively near future, you'll discuss that entire chapter. I think what the individual was trying to get the commission to discuss and to acquiesce to was the idea that what she was proposing and as she interpreted the state law dealing with solar panels, that um, she should be allowed to do that. We've resolved the problem in another fashion and it's being taken care of and it's up and gone. But the state, she did mention that the state considers this what she was doing as ground mounted solar and therefore it had to be permitted. Well the state in examining the law dealing with solar panels defines solar panels that you put on a roof as you know whether it's a commercial building or a residence as roof mounted. If it's on anything else, it's ground mounted because it doesn't float in the air. It's, it's mounted to whatever is mounted on the ground. That does not supersede local jurisdictions authority to call for permits for the structure that those solar panels would be on if they're mounted on the ground, ground mounted. We have criteria in the city under both the zoning and the building and safety dealing with what is an accessory structure and the standards that are applicable to it. And simply by saying you're going to put solar on top of something which is mandated by state, the city can't deny them the opportunity to put solar on things. Um, you can't simply get out from underneath the building and safety and zoning criteria uh, simply by putting solar panels on things. So you can't say my accessory, my, um, my uh, in this case, carports aren't carports aren't accessory buildings and they're not subject to permit simply because you're putting solar panels on it. In the same fashion you can't simply put solar panels on your roof and now say I can build my house without a permit because I'm going to put a solar panel on it. So we have resolved that individual's problem. You will be looking at accessory structures in an accessory structure chapter. So in essence uh, we've given you an update on the particulars of her issue uh, an update on the particulars that you will be looking at the concept of accessory structures, their, their size, their limitations, their setbacks, their separations, and th the number and so forth, uh, their potential for location. And with that, unless you have questions, I believe the, the topic has been covered. So my question would be the reason that this was on tonight's discussion item was I think the commission had a concern Correct. of what was going on and mm -hmm. how the city or in us, we could listen and try to resolve our issue, but it sounds like it's been resolved. Correct. Um, my other thing would be, I understand how, at first when I heard her, when she's talking about ground mounted solar panels, it made sense. But now that you explain, I, the ground mounted ones I've seen are maybe like three feet off the ground. Correct. And you're not That's what using people them for anything else. Correct. That's typically what you think of. Uh, you've got some four inch poles, you put them three feet into the ground in concrete, they stick up two and a half to four feet above the ground and you mount your solar panels on it and you can have a field of those. That's not uncommon at all. Uh, we deal with a lot of that in 29 Palms, a lot of that in 29 <coughs> Palms. But if you get above a certain height, there's a concern for the safety of those and a structure like hers was 14 feet in the air. And so you can't very well have a structure that's 14 feet in the air, several hundred square feet in size uh, that they intend to have uh, people park under, they intend to have human passage underneath and not, not want to make sure that they're physically safe. 
So my another question I have for you then on this issue, say if she already had a car parts exit car car ports existing and mm -hmm. she wanted to put solar panels on her, that would have been easier than starting from scratch? Correct. Absolutely. Okay. Because that structure would have already been considered, uh, would have uh, had, a, we assume, a permit issued to it. Uh, you would have to examine the footings and the structure itself to make sure that it could withstand the additional load, but, but solar panels are relatively light, so in most cases it, it wouldn't be a problem. Okay. How did you resolve her situation? Uh, we simply convinced her that she needed the permit, and her problem was that because of the choice of design that she had, it was going to create a situation where she was going to have to remove some more trees. We simply uh, suggested to her, and, and uh, she agreed to physically put the two separate structures to one structure, which still was under the criteria for an accessory structure. We didn't have a problem with it, and it solved her problems. So she didn't have to cut more trees now? No. And she's okay. still going to get enough light to do what Absolutely. she wants to do? Oh, yeah. oh, okay. Absolutely. Commissioner Phillips, any questions? No, not with that. Yeah. I just had one comment, and I can wait. Well, I have a question going back to the solar thing. Did you make any comments to her in regards that she is a illegal business there? That's a separate discussion that we have had her with her. She has uh, she's been made aware of the. Um, That's why would she invest in solar panels when it may go away? Well, she, she's aware that she needs to go through additional uh, planning review process. She's holding off on that because the city is looking at the what used to be called the rural business, um, and now we've got a new name for it. The, the commission and council will look at that, that new ordinance, and it may resolve her problem. And if it doesn't, then she needs to go through other steps to uh, bring her commercial activities up to uh, the requirements of the city's code. And she's well aware of it. Whatever happened with that, uh, that, what's that road called there that she's on? Um, it's in between that and shops at Scott. Um, what's that road? No, Chikati comes no. from, from Ziders down to this road, and then there's... Yeah, it's... Bailey, it's, Bailey Park Drive. No, Bailey does Bailey. come off. That's Isn't a, there another one? That's Bailey. Yeah, yeah. that's Bailey. Bailey will dead that's end the one with that, the freeway yeah. overpass. And the freeway overpass. Yeah. So right. but remember, we had the big issue of, because once the freeway overpass goes in, they will have no access out of there until Chikati goes in. Mm -hmm. So has anything been resolved with that, uh, the, the rental, the lift rental company and them paving and bringing sewer down? Did anything happen with that? Yeah, the, the no. Point, didn't the, the point, uh, what is Commerce it? Point Commerce Point. Commerce Point said that they were going to build mm -hmm. and put sewage, sewer and storm in there. Right. Yeah, and, I, and I thought between Summit and Commerce Point, Summit was going to basically pay their yeah. their portion but so it would alleviate some for commerce point to do some of those infrastructure improvements mm -hmm. that's my understanding is that correct mm -hmm. but nothing's been physically done nothing's right? been done because i don't think summit stepped up that was the well last discussion time. of an individual project that may be subject yeah. to code enforcement uh, yeah yeah okay so then that would lead us to and i have community development director comments uh, I have no comments other than what we've already said, <laughs> except for to wish you all a uh, happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Thank you. Did you ever take your wife out for anniversary? Yes. Good. Good. Yep, twice. I want to say right. code enforcement now. <laughs> <laughs> so are there any commissioner comments? Yes, I have a uh, disclosure to make. Uh, last week, uh, I attended the director's meeting uh, with the Eastern Municipal Water District. As you may know, I've got some affiliation with them. I'm on their mailing list. Um, they invited me to this meeting. It was very, very informative because, see, one of the things that we as Menifee have a concern about is what's happening with all of the money and the water, the, the money that we are paying into for, uh, you know, we're in a stage <coughs> 3A drought, and this is one of the things that they did was answer all of our concerns, well, most of our concerns about um, the money we are spending, what projects are going on, um, projections for the future, um, 
of things that uh, they are trying to do to kind of soften the blow of the drought that's impacting everybody. Uh, this is my uh, second interaction with Eastern Municipal. The first one, uh, they flew a contingent of us up to Sacramento and we got to see the state water project from Lake Oroville all the way down. Uh, this second one, they were talking about there's going to be some upgrades for the Paris 1 desal plant. Uh, we've already got one over here on Menifee. They're going to expand that, and that water is going to be returned directly to Menifee. Well, the Menifee and plant here? yeah, we've got one right over there on Menifee Road. I, Marietta Road. I mean Marietta Road. Is that right. taking groundwater and desalinating it? Yeah, they're taking the water right out of the basin. There, we have about five water basins here, one of which is uh, in Menifee that has good water, and the other four are very brackish. Mm. Uh, this wasn't really brought up at the meeting. It's something I was doing as a sidebar. Um, they are talking about putting in another desal plant in Elsinore. I don't know where they're going to put it, but that's one of the things that they were uh, talking about. Um, the retrofits are going to be they're going to do dam retrofits, one at Lake Paris and one at Diamond Valley to hopefully we can get some more water in here, but we don't know about that. And that was essentially it. It was very informative. Um, I should say about 80% of the people in attendance were from Menifee, mm. which shows that we are uh, have more of a concern about the uh, future of our water than of the other outlying communities do. So uh, I think it was very, very heartening to see the concerns of the citizens being expressed. So that's my uh, comments for that. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Chris? I'd like to piggyback off what you just was talking about, the water. Um, mm -hmm. I remember when I first came to the Planning Commission in 2010, 2011, January 2011, I believe. Mm -hmm. And there were conditions of improvement on certain projects and water was from the EMWD, the, the reports and some of their, that they'd say, yeah, there's plenty of water for the project, but in the future, if there's not, because uh, I think it was myself and Commissioner Miller asked, mm -hmm. well, it says in here that they have no contingency plan. The only thing is conservation. That's what they're relying on and charging people more for the water. And I had a concern about that then. Yeah. And so at that time, I think we've even grown double in size since right. then. I mean, because I know when I first moved here, it was like 35,000 people, and now we're 100,000 people, so. Right, and, and uh, they have uh, several documents in, in place. Their urban water management plan, and then there's a regional water management plan that addresses those. The sticky point was one of the things, because I've been doing studies of the Santa Ana Water Basin, and when I looked at their uh, urban water management plan, they're talking about pulling out a whole bunch of groundwater, which dovetails into your concern about where they're going to do this desal. Mm -hmm. And since we are so far inland, it's got to come out of those basins. Now, San Jacinto, and San Bernardino, they have their own water basins. Well, San Jacinto, the Saboba Indians sued the county. Now they have to put X amount of water into the groundwater basins over there to satisfy the tribes. Over here, we don't have that. And so the big concern for us is where is that water coming from? Because as you know, EMWD is one of the several uh, agencies that gives you a will serve letter for your projects. And I just asked the guy, how can you guarantee a will serve letter 20 years out? Number one, when we're in the stage 3A alert, and number two, you're depleting these water basins. And so uh, there is some fancy noise going on about that. Uh -huh. But if we don't get a decent amount of precipitation then 
I have to agree with a lot of other concerned citizens. We need to put a moratorium on building any more of these tract homes because it's really not good planning to base your will serve letter on a seriously depleted and brackish groundwater table. And so, and then too, there's this other sidebar thing that the activists are saying, we're pulling water out, we're desaling it, and we're sending it to the coast. You know, and so that, you know, where is our water going? And that was asked. The reason you have uh, EMWD say certain people saying, oh, we're okay, it's because you have development exactly. people on the board of EMWD with a vested interest. In vested that, interest. Right. Mm -hmm. And so what it amounts to is that for us to look at how we are growing and how we are configuring our communities, we need to know, number one, whether or not that's going to be a reliable source of water that is sustainable with the 20 years out. And at the rate we are depleting those groundwater aquifers now, uh, that's not going to happen 20 years out if we don't get any water to replenish that. Now, the state water project, they are guaranteeing to MWD that we're going to have enough water for that time period for the entire SoCal region. And so that's essentially what their theme is. But because of the Bay Delta controversy and because, uh, because of senior water rights holders and all of that, you're going to have some complications. There's a whole lot of hiccups in that because when you tour the Bay Delta, as we did, uh, you're going to find there's a whole lot of resistance up there. And the resistance is to that project. They're going to build these two tunnels that are about 35 miles long. And what they are doing is isolating a big chunk of that Bay Delta. And most people do not want that. So you've got that problem. Uh, the new groundwater legislation that the governor signed about a month ago is, in my attempt, a rather futile way of trying to regulate groundwater extraction all over the state. That's not going to happen because that's going to be litigated if not, if it hasn't started now. That may or may not affect us because I don't know who owns the basins here. That's the one thing I haven't been able to find out. But groundwater extraction and the ability and the attempt to try to regulate it, you're getting into some very serious laws because there is something, um, I forget what this is called, uh, riparian rights, and that extends to groundwater, and that's already been adjudicated. Set. Yeah, mm -hmm. adjudicated. Yeah, so uh, that's where we stand. Okay. Um, well, again, I'd like to thank you for those comments, and it's yeah. something for the commission to consider on upcoming projects, keep in the back of their mind. Like mm -hmm. I say, I think I mentioned it four years ago, and mm -hmm. it's coming around again. Yeah. So. And so at this time, if no one else has anything else, um, I'd like a motion for adjournment. I have one other question. Oh. So, mm -hmm. Lise Meyer, Commissioner Lise Meyer will not be here at the next meeting, correct? Yes, he will not. So that leaves four of us. Um, and that seat, other one seat will maintain, be maintained vacant until John Denver appoints a new commissioner? Until a new commissioner is appointed and sworn in. So in that in the intervening time, then he'll act as? No, he is automatically, automatically. when, mm -hmm. when Leesmeyer is uh, sworn in, then he vacates the seat for chair, and then the, uh, according to our rules, the vice chair is automatically uh, promoted to chair. Okay. Congratulations. But then in January, you, you select new, uh, new um, officers anyway. Okay. Uh, um, you may wish to delay until all five members are on the commission, uh, so you may not do it the first meeting, which is traditional, so you may delay it, but um, you have the opportunity uh, at the first meeting to uh, select the new chair and vice chair. Okay. Yeah, because you'll have two new commissioners. The one, one that Matt points and the one that John Denver points. That's true. Yes. Well, if you go ahead and politic hard, we'll support you. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, yeah, if you're still here. Right? Yeah. I won't be here. 
What? Are you are you not I'll accepting? Be, I'll be gone. So by, I, I'll just, by choice. It's the way it is. So no, just December tenth. That, probably that, the that kind of a discussion yeah. uh, may not okay. be. We'll talk after. Okay. okay. So does someone want to make a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in All favor. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Aye.